Welcome back to the videos, guys. Today, Paisley and I are uh, pulling apart a couple transmissions. So if you've watched the last, I think, Dotson video, I did mention that we were going to be doing something here pretty soon with the Dotson. And uh, we are getting ready to go back to dyno uh, on the 9th of August. So my birthday, we're going to hit the dyno, see how much power she makes. But first, I want to go ahead and try and get a 240SX trans made it up to the L series. The five speed would be a lot better than the factory four speed. It would give us an actual cruising gear and it can hold more power. So if on dyno day we get there, she's running great. We want to put a little bit more boost through her. We can do that without blowing up the car. So this process is going to be a little bit more involved than a simple bolt up solution. We're going to have to pull both bell housings off the transmissions, which I've already done the 240, as you can see here. Um, and we're gonna have to do some machine work on the L-Series bell housing to get it to fit up to this. And that's not a huge deal. It's just getting it done and uh, making sure it all works and lines up before we go to dyno in a week and a half. So I've gotta go ahead and get started on this. I don't have access to the lift, so I'm going to have to do this on the ground. I'm gonna to have to drop the trans, pull it out, pull the bell housing off, and then I will walk you through what you're going to have to do to get it to mate up to the KA or SR transmission. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect your battery. Come down here to your starter. There's going to be one yellow wire that is your trigger wire and then you'll have your positive and your ground held in by two 14s and one 14 millimeter which will be to your positive super quick and easy to take out i'm going to get it jacked up and then we'll go over what you're going to have to do in the rear to get this thing out of here so what we've got to do before anything else is remove this cross member along with the exhaust Drop it down up front and then take out the drive shaft half moon bolts. And what that'll allow us to do is drop the drive shaft down and then proceed to remove the transmission cross member and the bell housing bolts. Well guys, I haven't really recorded any of this. That's not a very nice monkey, but we got the bell housings out. I think I had this one off before I even started. This one is the 280, which I have started to grind. This smaller upper circle, which is actually the lower circle when it's bolted, just the way I have it positioned right now, has to be ground down to almost smooth with the bottom surface inside the bell housing. And then that upper hole will have to be bored out to six 16 millimeters we got a 15.9 millimeter bolt so i'm hoping or a drill bit so i'm hoping that that's close enough and then we will have to remove our counter shaft bearing off the 240 and put on the counter shaft bearing from the 280. so i'm hoping to get all this done within the next week because as i have said this is going to go to dyno and i would like to have the transmission we're going to be using in it when we hit the dynamometer. What I'm trying to do now is pull the counter shaft bearing off of the 280 transmission, and then I'll have to pull the one off of the 240. Or what's happening is it just seems to be bending my bearing puller and not actually pulling the bearing off. You can see it's got that lip in there, and it hasn't really moved any at all. So I was able to get the 240s off with a bearing puller, just like the one I was using, a mallet and a pry bar. What I did was I put the bearing puller on there. It didn't quite fit, so I used the rubber mallet to tap the little arms into place. But then it was able to pull that one off pretty easy. Now I'm still working on the 280Z one. I'm trying to be a little bit careful with the bearing itself because I want to use it but this one uh, this side came off pretty damn easy well guys it's still a mess I went ahead 
I bought it. Bye. I bought a bigger, beefier pulley. Hopefully this guy will do the job because this one, wherever it is, is now bent and will not clasp onto the 280Z countershaft bearing. I think I said pulley. Bearing, countershaft bearing. So I'm gonna try, use this one, pull that off. And then we only have a little bit left to do inside the bell housing. I gotta finish up this smaller circle. And then I drilled that out last night. It was super quick, super easy. Just a 16 millimeter drill bit will do the job. I had a 15.9, so I went ahead and wallered it out just a little bit. Just to be on the safe side, I did go ahead and put it on the transmission to make sure that the shift rod, I, I don't, sorry, I'm not super well versed with transmissions, but to make sure that the rod would actuate back and forth through it and it was perfectly fine. So I'm going to say that that's good. We'll go ahead. We'll get hopefully this bearing pulled off and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. Well, I ended up getting it, but uh, not with a bearing puller. I used a tie rod slash ball joint tuning fork. And uh, took me a little bit, but that mallet, we did end up getting it. And we got it put on the other trans already. It is not, uh, not terribly hard at all to put it back on, but uh, taking it off is a pain in the ass. So that's good to go. Now what we need to do is come back over here, finish our machining, more or less just grinding away at that counter shaft bearing hole. And then I am going to put some, it's like a sealant. It's made especially for uh, things in contact, for things in contact with uh, gear oil. Looks just like that. It's a gasket maker. So I'm going to go ahead, get those two things done, reassemble the transmission, and I will come back to you and show you just how I do that because there are a couple uh, snap rings and uh, you need to make sure that you get both of them in the right spot. And really, that's about all there is to it. We'll get her thrown back together and uh, ready to put in the car. After that, we got to go ahead and cut our drive shaft, find the length that we want, and hopefully that's uh, that's the rest of it. We'll start it up, but I'm sure there will be more problems. So stay tuned and I will keep you updated. Also, I didn't see many videos out there on this. There was one, I think it was called Sparky's Garage. And that's kind of where I got the idea on how I was going to do the bearings and take material off of the bell housing. So if you guys don't think my video is in depth enough and want to watch something that's a little bit more drawn out but really in depth, go ahead and watch Sparky's video. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you guys are interested. If not, uh, that's cool too. Well, guys, uh, has been stressful. I did not, uh, I did not film a lot of this because, uh, I don't feel comfortable enough giving you guys advice on this one or instruction. I got the five speed in and reverse is not working. I don't know if that's because of me or if I just happened to get a trans where reverse was broken which seems unlikely to me. I just can't get it to go into reverse. All the other gears work. I haven't driven it yet. I filled it up. I'm gonna go ahead and go drive it, make sure everything else is good. The trans slid right on. It bolted right up as I anticipated because the bell housing was exactly the same, but we're gonna go for a drive. We're gonna go see how it does. Um, T3, the T3 mount I used, perfect was great, it looks beautiful. Uh, really, 
I just need to pull her out, take her for a drive. Hopefully one through five works perfectly fine. It shifts into the gears, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they work. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to go drive it. I'm going to get back to you and tell you what I think. But right now, this is a bust. Um, I'm at the point where I wish I would have sent this off to Godzilla Raceworks to get machined because I don't think that this one was worth doing myself. I think that this one should have been done by people that had experience in it, but I gave it a shot. Would I do this one again? Definitely not. I would, uh, I would send it off and I would get an actual uh, shop who's got experience with transmissions to uh, get this done as I, I don't have experience with working on transmissions very much other than taking them out and changing clutches. Yeah. Paisley, what do you think of it? She said be quiet. Another thing I will bring up is the shifter sits slightly farther back, but it is in no means like inhibited by anything. So it fits really well. That shift knob actually came out of my brother's 350Z. I got it for him for his birthday or for Christmas one year. And then he ended up selling the Z, but wow, that's shaky. So, then he ended up selling the Z and uh, well, it fit the 240SX shifter threads. So we used it on here and it's, it's pretty heavy, but um, if I keep this trans long term, I will get a short throw shifter. Right now, it's just got the the stock one, and it's kind of not very notchy. It's a lot better than the the Datsun transmission is, but still has room for improvement. As does a lot of this car. Well, it looks like it didn't seal up too well either. So that's that's a real bummer. Well, guys, the, uh, the Z is probably going to be taking a little bit of a break for a while. It is leaking so bad that I uh, probably shouldn't drive it anymore as of right now. So until I figure something out, she's going to be sitting. Uh, we'll probably get some more Mark 8 GTI content and uh, get that going. Thank you all for watching. Sorry this video was garbage. Um, have a wonderful day. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. All right, guys. We will catch you next time.